Welcome to Comms Business Live. My name is David Dungay, editor and publisher of Comms Business Magazine. Today we have Mr. Paul Gibbs from My Phones. Paul, how are you doing? I'm very well. And yourself? I'm very well, thank you. In desperate need of a haircut, as you can see, but aside from that, I am doing well. That is a fantastic hairdo, I must say. It's almost Lego-like. I'm going to see how far I can uh, how far I can go with it. I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost I almost don't want it to end, frankly, David. I just want to see the volume that can be achieved by the end of it. <laughs> so, Paul, Paul, give us give us an update. We chatted a couple of months ago when the pandemic sort of kicked off and we all went into lockdown. Um, obviously, lots has happened in the market since. How has the last couple of months been for for yourself and my phones? Yeah, it's been it's, it's been amazingly busy actually. I think the you know after dealing with the initial surge of people driving to get the technologies deployed at home or, or, or get their workplace set up as they wanted it to, I think now they're looking at um, what the future is, how how the future is for them working, what they need at home on a permanent basis. Um, so that that's been one. And I think behind the scenes we've done a huge amount of work in uh, rebranding. Uh, and sort of some advancements on the product. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to um, talking to the channel about those further. Yeah, oh, I can see, obviously, we've got some branding on the stream today. This is the yes. new branding. Tell this us, is tell it. This is it, yeah, new branding. Tell us, what does it all, what does it all mean? I don't know, David, frankly. I just like the look <laughs> of it. Uh, no, so, um, so it's like anything, isn't it? You know, we, we had the old branding. I think it needed uh, a refresh um so 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 that's what we've done so you know we've changed the font i think it obviously referenced dots and dashes uh, so morse code um but you know we're going to use those different color schemes to do different modules around our business so some will be training and uh, you know so some will be technology etc so yeah it's uh we're pleased with what we've done it's been hugely busy um getting some of the sort of product advancements ready ready to go you know i think with teams Teams integration probably being our, our biggest thing. Um, we've worked very hard on that around differentiating our teams integration to what the lot of what are the what a lot of the market are using. Um, so yeah, we've okay. got that now, and that will be coming out um, early next month. Tell tell us while we're talking about teams, tell us about that. You know why why exactly is is your proposition uh, different or, or better? than uh, anyone else is obviously everyone is talking about teams right now yep. um microsoft are grabbing a lot of headlines along with another large vendor who uh, their growth just seems to be you know yes straight yep. up to the right um why is yours better uh it's about being different and i think that we look long and hard a lot of the vendors have just chosen the there's one de facto teams integrator out there that a lot of people choose um but i didn't want to do that i wanted to sort of see if we could achieve anything by doing it um more in-house we're a software only house um so we've got development teams um so we've worked with some spc vendors um to see what we can get uh, out of microsoft teams and underpinning it with all of the my phones technology and actually very very pleased with the results we are going to be launching you know you'll be able to do do with teams uh, everything that you can do with our platform um and, and obviously use the get the benefit from teams across the uc the project based stuff you know all of that will just be underpinned with the feature rich technology from my phones yeah okay T tell me about the, the partner landscape right now um you know we saw a lot of partners following sales staff back in end of march early april time um is that is that still the case what are your partners telling you um about what, what's going on right now yeah so um i think a lot of them did did furlough all of their sales staff initially um and now it's around how they bring them back in a structured fashion so i think a lot of our resellers are starting to bring back their sales teams we're seeing that um not all at once in all cases uh, a lot of them are doing it in a sort of we'll bring back these individuals first then we'll do the next phase and they're phasing it so as it means that the office can adapt to have uh, you know having people in it uh, for mm -hmm. one because you know that they've had to prepare to get their office to have human beings back in it so um, spacing out the desks making sure it's fit for purpose not having the aircon on 
you know all of the temperature you know temperature cctv that a lot of people are deploying um so that's but you know they've been building up to this but i think the 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 massive positive and as you know i'm quite a positive person um but i think the huge positive is it, it's coming back we're, we're starting to see resellers winning new business um which is the first time in a long time um yeah. but they are winning new business and new bids and and some quite large business as well actually so um yeah i think the signs are positive for a what i'm sure is going to be a, a slow recovery but we are in recovery mode which is fantastic no, I mean that's that's brilliant to hear that there's yeah. um, this business going on now. I mean, what I mean, what's your expectation from this point on? We're in mid June right now until um, the end of the year. Do you think? Do you think we'll you know get most of the way back there by the end of the year? Do you think it might drag on a little bit longer the recovery oh, process? It's a tough. It's a tough one. You know, I think we've spoken about it, um, but you know, I think it's going to be difficult because I don't think businesses are going to want. Uh, strangers in their office so i think how we sell is going to change hugely um so adapting these adapting to these technologies and then really getting out there in the market and saying uh, you know going to see people virtually is going to is going to be what everyone's going to need to do because i don't think offices will want sales people in them frankly um or strangers to their business um because they're more concerned around getting themselves back and working again yeah um, so that's going to be a huge change in commuting. You know, that's the other thing to think about. You know, will we be back to normal? I, I, I don't think, you know, plane travel, I don't think we'll be going on. This is, again, just my personal opinion, but I think that's going to be a difficult one um, because do, would I want to get on a plane full of other people um, to go abroad? Uh, is, is it worth the risk? And that, that that's the question we all need to ask yourself isn't it yeah of course you might have a, a two-week quarantine when you get to your destination oh it's nice you get a double holiday that way don't you well yeah exactly might not be a bad idea actually good thinking <laughs> <laughs> um okay so um what else do I want to, so we talked about the the big vendors there you mentioned your team's integration um yeah. i wanted to talk about more fundamentally you know th these um you know, we've seen microsoft put on some huge numbers into their team's product we've seen zoom do the same um, we see, well, we see growth all around in the UC sort of space, which is which is great. What, what does that all mean, though, for for the channel ultimately? Listen, I think it's a huge, again, it's a huge positive. I think when we come out of this, you know, or we, we're starting to come out of it now, right? But actually, there's going to be a marked change in the way what people, what technology people have in their offices. So. You know, I mentioned it briefly, but I think, you know, if you listen closely, you can probably hear the PBX is being unscrewed from office walls as we speak, because anyone that was on ISDN during this period has had an absolute nightmare around diverts and who it gets diverted to and voice. All of those things that people just perhaps took for granted had to change in this period. So um, I think now the switch off of, you know, 2025, I, yeah. I don't think that'll be a worry for us. And I think the, the positive is in the channel is um, exactly that. I think that when we go back to work, people will be like, right, can you come and deploy this technology? Or can you come and see me and talk to me about what's available in the market, how I can have it at home in our office? And it's a potential huge opportunity for the channel. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I mean, it's, it's refreshing, actually. We, there was always that big worry about were we ready for 2020? Were we going to be ready for the switch off? Yeah, uh, I think I think inadvertently COVID's given us all a bit of a boot uh, to to get there quicker. You know, I, I yeah, hundred percent. Now, now see it a little bit more. Yeah, I think it's just sort of lit the blue touch paper, really, isn't it? And we're we're gonna, um, you know, the channel is gonna reap the reap the benefits because what we do is what we do all day every day, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, see, you mentioned um, you know you're a bit unsure about what's going to happen at the sort of between now and the end of the year. Obviously, October is quite a significant milestone for the for the UK. Um, the furlough scheme obviously officially ends then, although it's slightly different, I think, from July onwards. Um, you know, is that is that a is that a danger? Is that is a something to be mindful there that that October date when that when that stops? Are you expecting? 
a little bit maybe a delayed sort of recession at that at that point you know what what, what are your thoughts around that uh <laughs> trying to stay positive but yes i think we are going to see a slightly delayed uh delayed effect i think we are you know the uh, furloughing uh, scheme has underpinned a lot of businesses um and i think once that stops or we start to come out of it then the actual net effect of uh, of what's happening will be will be very real for a lot of businesses you know yeah. in the hospitality trade and you know that that sort of thing is going to be i suppose you've just got to get yourself adapted and ready so as when you do come out of it you can make the best you can make the best possible out of what is a very difficult situation um yeah. but yeah i think i think potentially we will and i think we'll you know i speak to a lot of retailers and you know i think i think the channel have been quite surprised by the lack of bad debt today so it's actually quite a small percentage actually of people not paying their bills because so that is, is a key service but yeah i think people will be looking at their dd runs very very closely come september october november december december especially um because you know will, will people start defaulting on their bills so i think it's about working with our customers to make sure that they are customers not just for next month but for the for, for the longer term yeah absolutely okay um obviously this has been a unprecedented time that word's been used a lot um recently um but we're learning things all the time especially when it comes to how how we operate in our day-to-day -day lives not just personal lives work lives um especially um you know what, what i mean what do you feel we've really learned i guess as an industry since since march well that's a big question david uh so what do i think we've learned um i think it's probably more around what we learn as a as a nation more than a channel um you, you never know what was around the corner <laughs> that's yeah. something that you know i've definitely taken on board no one saw this coming no one and the fact that it arrived and um arrived with such sort of ferocity um shocked everyone um but it's i think what it has shown us is how to how resilient we are as a as the you know the uk are um and how we are good at adapting to change um because i think we we've had to change and change very fast um and i think you know it it will it, it will teach i think it's taught businesses with their technology that they need to make sure that um you know if something bad happens they can they can work from home and and, and it's feasible for them to run their business away mm -hmm. from their hq and um, we we hopped on about it for years didn't we around getting snowed in and people were like well it's only two days and we'll make do and then it will go back to normal and to an extent they were right um but what covid's done is essentially snowed us in for months um so, so you know i think that's that that's been the biggest thing that they've they've learned is the fact that it won't necessarily all be all right you know you've got to you've got a plan um plan plan for what the future may bring sure okay so um you know halfway through the year at the moment uh, you, you mentioned your your teams um your team's proposition coming to market imminently uh, which is exciting what else is exciting you about what's coming out of my phones right now what what would you like to share with with our audience i think we're a changed business from from what we were uh, a few months ago i think we've worked very hard on rebranding i think there was a perception in the channel that were you know and i think that was wrong um but but you know so the big thing is we're majoring on the fact that we're a software only house bundles aren't always the best and, and i'm really trying to sort of um, do a lot around education around why why we think bundles aren't always the best and um, so the benefit tell around us. well just tell, just us, really, tell us all tell us tell us um what you what you get you know the, the fact that you know if you don't have to take a bundle and have sit plugged in you know that that, that bundle which you know is one fixed price is, is not right for everybody um so you know the benefit of aggregated sip that's probably one of you know if you look at a i don't know a sip channel out there in the market what are they four pound fifty four pounds let's say four pound fifty um we're seeing aggregation levels of 28 to 30 to one on our platform so 
28 users get served by one SIP channel. So mm -hmm. in effect, that means that I'm really only paying 16p for my SIP, that part of the SIP channel to service those users. So again, the, I think we're doing a lot around educating the channel and sort of saying um, you can make margin at all the touch points um, within a hosted sale with us. Whereas with the bundles, it's a one price fits all. And, and, and I don't think, um, I don't think one price does fit all anymore. Um, yeah. So we've, we've worked hard on that. Um, newly refreshed portal. So dare I say, I think it will be industry leading because we've taken a lot around what we, um, you know, what, what we've seen from out there in the, in the channel and hopefully put the best bits together. So a very informative portal around what you're running at. Um, so you can see how lean you can run your SIP channels, you know, how many devices you've got plugged in, how many parts you've got in your warehouse. It's really all interlinked and, and it, and it looks very nice to boot. So I think, you know, that's been, uh, it doesn't sound like much, but that's been an awful lot of work. And I think that when we, um, you know, we're, we're, we're coming to the market with that um, end of this month, actually. So I think, um, yeah, people that engage with us will see a change business. Yeah, well, look, I'm really excited to see, you know, how the MyPhone story develops and uh, how your journey develops um, there as well. Thanks, David. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, grill me this morning. <laughs> no problem. My pleasure. So, right. yes, you've been watching Comms Business Live. My name's David Dungay and this is Paul Gibbs. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.